Rated M for Mature. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for tuning in to Super Barley Brothers Podcast, where four middle-aged fathers discuss crappier video games and more. My name is Ian. I am at Dean75002 at Twitter. Hi, this is Jerry. Twitter, JD underscore Chef. John, you can reach me on Twitter, Phoenix42. Hi, I'm Scott, and you can reach me on Twitter, Flip42FL1P42. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. We have no relation with any companies, individuals, or properties, and any trademarks or copyrights that may be utilized. So long to the entity that it is associated with. There we go. Okay, now we're live. Good evening, and welcome to episode 12, I think it is, of the Super Barley Brothers podcast. Uh, tonight, we're going to be covering the beers that we're drinking, the games that we're playing, and the conventions that some of us have gone to and some of us didn't get to go to. So, diving right into it to begin with, I am, uh, I'm just going to run down real quick. I'm drinking the Cedar Creek Brewery. That's a special release. What's your uh, name? It's Ian. Okay. Right. Remember, we have podcast listeners. They can't see that. He Do you not put the name. thing at the beginning of the audio as well? I as... don't care. Just... Okay. I'm Ian. See, there you go. Hi. So I'm... I, so I <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I'm drinking um, the Cedar Creek Brewery's uh, Spinning Mule. It's a uh, it's a robust porter. It's nice. Uh, that got a really nice uh, chocolatey hint to it because they dropped like bits of coconut, coke, coke, coke. coke. Uh, they dropped the cocoa. cocoa. Cocoa nips in there. Cocoa, whatever. Um, also, I wanted to show this off before I poured my beer. I hope this comes through on the camera. This is a... Damn it, it's not coming through at all. There's way too much glare. This is a glass. Oh, that's good. Holy shit, a fucking salmon's glass. Yeah. Quick talk yeah. so we can see it. Yeah, you got to shut oh, up for a second. Quick so, talk so you can see it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so... <laughs> A friend of mine got me this for uh, for my birthday. It, there's an Etsy. Um, their Etsy page was shared on the group. I think it was like Spit Spirit. Damn it! I brought it up so that I wouldn't mispronounce it. Where the fuck did they go? Spriteborn on Etsy, and uh, they they do all sorts of different type of references on their etchings. But yeah, it's a uh, it's same as Aaron. Dude, you gotta show us the glass after you pour that in there to see what it looks like with the color in the background. Okay. Hang on. If you take a picture of it, I'll put it on the site too. Take a picture of the beer. Is that a what? Book? What side? No, is I meant the glass. Oh, yeah, okay. what's what side is that? It's not live yet. Oh, whoops! I'm still trying to get some of the bugs worked out. Okay, so since you brought that up, um, we are moving off of the free WordPress site, and we've now got our own. Oh, we can see the etching on that much better, Ian. Can you? Oh yeah. Let's take a look at that now. Oh That's yeah. Sexy. I just can't tilt it now to try to hide any of the other uh, the glare. Oh, but, yeah. It still shows up. There was there is a, a really nice um, one for the helmet that I want to get for like a bourbon glass, where it's a you know small little tumbler and it's got just the helmet done across it. But yeah, they've got a lot of really awesome stuff on that on that Etsy page. So I highly recommend you guys checking it out. Cynthia shared the link of them uh, in the group on Facebook. So. Okay. I will have to go check that out. I miss it. I'll put that in the site too. Um, but yeah, back to that. So we are moving off of the free WordPress uh, and we've got our own domain now, Super Barley Bros. What happened to my face? There we go. Uh. You went by my what? Super Barley Bros. What happened to my face? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Remember that whole URL, superbarleybros.com. Uh, so we've got our own website now. We're still getting it up and running and whatnot, and I've got to change a bunch of intros and outros now, um, especially like what we, whatever we decide to do with Podbean and iTunes and whatnot. Um, but uh, more information to come. We've also got our own Facebook page and uh, um, Twitter account now. So what you drinking? Me, I am drinking a ten fifty Imperial Stout. Amazing, isn't it? It was left here at some point. I poured it into a glass, and holy cow, that was dark. Have you tested it yet? Oh well, yeah, the glass was full. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and then glass. and then I'll be uh, drinking some uh, Rar and Sons uh, Buffalo Butt after no. that. No, you mm. probably won't. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> that's Just because uh, it's a ten point five. No, that's how I'm feeling right now. What I got going on is a Buffalo Butt. <laughs> oh. 
Too what did you have for dinner to... that you uh, that you I had like babes you for dinner? Oh babes man, <laughs> no, I've never had that place. I had so too I much would... cream corn. I'm sorry, cream corn. <laughs> God damn! Can we really stop talking about? <laughs> Get me some That's... cream corn. Oh yeah. You've seen it for days. All right, so. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. It's like a so bookmark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go next. Read it in for mature. So John hooked me up this past week about, what was it, Tuesday, I think. Um, my wife had to go to the grocery store to pick up some stuff, and actually his wife had already just gone to our local Kroger food chain. And Sierra Nevada has done a special beer release called Beer Camp where they collaborated with 12 different brewers from around the United States and did their own pretty much concoction of a specific type of beer. And I have two tonight that I'll be trying out out of the 12. Uh, the first one that I'm drinking right now is called Myron's Walk, and that is done in collaboration with a brewery I've never heard of called Allagash Brewing Company. I'm not sure where they're located. East but Coast, this is a, I think. Oh, East Coast, okay. This is a, a Belgian ale. That's brewed with coriander. I have no idea what the fuck coriander is. It's a seed. Oh, so I'm having more seeds, like with the corn in me. Nice. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think so far? Uh, it's not bad. It's not as. Poured in a I mean, glass. I'm not a big ale guy. Poured in a glass. To be honest with you. Uh, all right, I'll you step need, away and go walk and get a glass. I'm drinking yeah. out of the bottle. Yeah, you need a glass. Heathen. Heathen. <laughs> That's actually so, the one that I had just the other night, and it's, okay. it's damn good. It is. I mean, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I get a little bit of hop out of it. It's not bad. Um, and then to make up for the hoppiness, I have the Torpedo Pilsner, which is a hoppy pilsner that is in collaboration with Firestone Walker, who I like a lot. So I'll be popping that here shortly. Very nice. Pop. And that's me. And my name is Scott. <laughs> Since I don't know if Jerry introduced himself. Jerry, there you go. I'm yeah. sorry, okay? I forgot about the intro already, even though I spent all that time on it. <laughs> hey, I just thought you gave me a tell. Might as well. <laughs> I'm a jackass. Oh, uh, yeah, that's funny. All right, so I guess I will go next. Um, What's I'm, your name? I am some random guy. Oh, okay, cool. I like you it. Don't, you don't need to know who I am. I'm just some random guy. <laughs> you don't need to know me. I am John. Okay, so I am having a G. Schneider and Sons Weizen Edelweiss from Germany. Belgian, or a uh, German pure uh, Puritan Law beer. Uh, it's absolutely phenomenal on taste. Uh, and then I will be following it up with one of the Beer Camp beers as well. This one just happens to be the Electric Ray. And this one is brewed, it's an Indian Pale Lager. So not your standard ale. And uh, this one's done with Ballast Point. It sounds like it's uh, like Chain Breaker. Yeah. Yeah, probably very similar along that lines. So that is what I am enjoying. Fantastic. <laughs> Glad to hear everybody's having fantastically delicious beers. That's fantastically delicious. This is not Lucky Charms. Sorry. No, no, no. Lucky Charms are magically delicious. <laughs> I know, but that's what I, I was getting it from. No, no, Thank you, I, John, no, I, for understanding me. Oh, Jesus John. Christ. No, John was... Oh, <laughs> what the fuck shut up. <laughs> fuck a whole bunch of you guys. Okay. Shut up. So let's uh, let's just kind of barrel into this. Do we want to cover the convention first, or do we want to cover what we've been playing reluctantly? Well, reluctantly. Hey, I actually quite enjoy watching your your cast that you stream out. That's just beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? That fucking get. Okay, let me let me go ahead and get into it, and so that nice. everybody can what we're too. talking about. Um, so I recently wrapped up playing through Outlast um, on the Xbox One. I streamed it through Twitch and then was able to archive it onto our YouTube channel, which I believe is Super Barley Brothers, or is it Bros? Bros. Bros. Okay, Super Barley Bros. Um, 
if you just look up Fiend Plays, that's uh, that's the name of my uh, Let's Play videos, and and everybody else has theirs. Like Jerry's is JD Shep, uh, John's is Phoenix, and then um, Scott's is Flip, um, with a one. And uh, so I just recently played through Outlast. Um, I, I thought it would be funny. I went ahead and bought it, and I thought it would be funny to play online, you know, play and stream to en entertain everybody. But apparently, everybody got a lot of entertainment out of it, except for me. <laughs> well, why is that, Ian? Because it was scary as shit, dude. I mean, I literally, after the first time playing through, uh, it, you know, my first stream, oh, every time, because I only, I think it only took me three streams to get through the entire game. It wasn't very long. It was probably about six to eight hours max. And um, when I was, um, the, the second two times that I went in to do the streams, I um, I had severe heartburn and anxiety because it was just it's just so much to have to deal with trying to trying to it's so imagine if you will uh, Metal Gear Solid with no weapons, no guns, nothing along those lines. All you can do is hide from your enemies or they're gonna rip your fucking head off. And you've got nothing but your night vision camera with you as as your source of viewing. I mean you could take it down and try to look around without it. In fact there's a section of the game where you lose your camera, which was that was fucking bullshit. And uh oh. sorry, I had to take a drink. Um and so it was um it, it was full of jump scares. In fact, what was it? My first night when I was playing it, I had seen the beginning of the game, um, like back when it first released. So the scene where the guy is on the pike in the window didn't alarm me at all, didn't scare me. I knew he was going to come alive. But there was this section, the first time you go to squeeze between two things, and the guy reaches in and grabs you, pulls you out of it, and throws you. I knew that was going to happen. What I didn't know was since I had these fuckers on and completely encompassing to the point where, you know, it sounded like everything was right there with me, um, I didn't realize he talked when he did that. So as soon as he said little fish, it was right here in this ear, as if this giant, lipless, noseless hulk of a man was right fucking here. So he says it, grabs me and pulls me out of that thing and throws me, and that was just the start of the conundrum of the bullshit that was going to happen. I got chased around an asylum by two naked guys that wanted my liver and tongue. Um, I had to deal with a doctor that was trying to figure out ways to sell society on a giant pair of scissors. Are you uh, sure that's he, all they wanted from you, by the way, those two naked guys? Is that all they wanted from you? The Winky Dink Twins? No, no, no. I'm sure there's something else that they wanted from me. <laughs> I'm just not willing to. Are they called the Winky Dink? That's not what they're actually called. That's what I call them because I'm oh, okay. <laughs> new. There is no censorship to it at all. If you really wanted to, you could crouch down and look at their three inches just chilling out. Hmm. <laughs> it's uh, wow, interesting. Slightly disturbing, and you know the game was. I mean, it was it was fun. It was functional. It didn't break. It didn't do anything bad like that. I'm not complaining because the game doesn't work or the game was unfair or anything along those lines. It's just sometimes it was just a little too fucking scary for me. So, And uh, as soon as it was over, one of the people that was watching the stream, uh, I, I ended up you know, streaming until the credits were over and went back out to the main title, and someone pointed out that the whistleblower was there. It's like, I didn't buy the whistleblower. I'm not doing the whistleblower unless I buy it for like really, really cheap or unless people donate the money for me to play that. Because that's eight bucks for a two hour piece of DLC. So that's only one stream worth wow. of content. And but that's yeah. just to scare the scare you the fuck out, right? Yeah, 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 more of that shit. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, uh, I, I strongly suggest checking out the uh, the archive of it on uh, on the YouTube. It. Uh, it was entertaining. If I wasn't streaming it, I would not have finished the game because it was so fucking scary. Good to know. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm glad that you did that, though. Yeah. Thanks well, for taking and it, the team. Yeah. Well, that, you that also... Taking, you, you might be taking another one for the team because um, not to whatever, go into the next topic or whatever, but um, to whatever. I have... <laughs> I know, John and I got the privilege of playing Evil Within at QuakeCon, <laughs> and I did get to talk to the PR girl behind it. We might get a review copy. And oh, that will boy. go to you, Ian. <laughs> you, buddy. 
<laughs> Why the fuck me? Because we're all sissies. No. Scott's, Scott's a sissy. Oh, oh John, so John's going to do it? What the, I, let's talk about this, John. Let's hey, see what I, your reaction was to I this. I had my jump back game. moments during that demo. Oh, let, let, let's go ahead and jump right in, okay? Shall we? <laughs> so, let's quick. Go no, we're going out of order. No. Oh, order. Whatever. We can backtrack that. <laughs> so... QuakeCon was last weekend. It was from the 18th through the 21st. Uh, I think that's right. Sounds about right. And it's a convention that's put on every year, land party, whatever you want to call it, by um, pretty much Bethesda now, but it used to be hosted by id only before they partnered with Bethesda. Um, it has turned into a lot of what Bethesda is now, which is Elder Scrolls Online, um, with the Evil Within coming out. Wolfenstein was a little bit um, talked about, but not much. The only thing Ed related that really got everybody's pants wet was at the keynote, the Doom reveal that was everybody expected. And I'm going to let John and Jerry talk about it so that I can talk about the indie game and uh, Evil Within. But um, take it away, guys. Talk about what you... John, I know that you are the veteran Doom player. Jerry, you are not. You haven't played any of the Doom games. That's why I want to hear Jerry's what you, review first. What are your I thoughts? His thoughts. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. Hey, I guess I'll take this away. Um, SuperBarleyBros.com. We've got uh, a full uh, article written by Flip42 on the Doom reveal. Suggest you go out there and like, share, comment on that. But anywho, so yes, I did not play any of the Doom games uh, as far as campaign is concerned. I, I have played. Uh, all the way through. Um, I did do some land party, you know, multiplayer stuff with, with Doom and or Quake. Uh, so I understand the concept of Doom. I understand uh, the storyline, and I watched the blockbuster hit movie. Doom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop right there. I, I especially I enjoyed it. That, I did not know you were going to bring that shit into this conversation. Now, John... You're going to have to answer for why you let Jerry go first. Talking about this shit. <laughs> damn it. Oh, yeah, I loved that first-person shot in the movie. That was freaking awesome. Um, I the movie. It was. It was everybody blew up in the uh, dollar theater. No, I'm just, I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, there was one scene from the uh, Street Fighter movie where it went side to side while they were fighting. Yep. I don't remember that, really. Yeah, it was like for that quick, but uh, it, uh, nothing on Netflix yet because I'm not wasting any money on that one. <laughs> I wouldn't even waste your time to watch that one. <laughs> the best one to watch, actually, if you really want to watch a fighting game like movie, track down the anime for the Samurai Showdown, and in fact, near the end of it, uh, they show off a move that nobody had figured out in the game. They actually show the move on the screen. Like, he oh calls God. it out, and then you see what you do with the joystick, and it says B.A., and uh, and then, you know, he does the move, so. That's the Street Fighter awesome. anime also is really good to check out. Yeah, actually, the Street Fighter anime is really good, but that yeah. movie. The, uh, what was that? The Assassin Fist? Um, they did a, on YouTube. They're supposed to be doing another one, actually. I think that mm. was announced at Comic-Con, but that's further on down our conversation. But cool. anyways, you, as you can see, this is a conversational podcast, so uh, we jump all over the place if you haven't figured that one after 12 episodes. But anyways, um, so Doom, the reveal, uh, combination of bad chairs and awesomeness, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Um it, uh, I was not in the, the press area with you two, um, but I was in the back, and uh, you know they did their dog and pony show before they actually got to it and whatnot. Um, but the the things that got me the most with with the game is first of all, of course, it's next gen um, looking graphics, and it was being demonstrated hang on. on a PC. Hang on, hang on, I'm I'm really sorry. Um... Next no, gen not. is no longer the proper term. <laughs> no. It is Fuck. current gen or new gen. Do it's not use gen. next gen. Next if gen, gonna, motherfucker. If we're going to talk any gens, we talk old gen. That's about oh, it when we start talking about... I you, like, old gen. Well, you feel free to hop in your car and drive on over here, buddy. Old oh, man. <laughs> Anyways, Xbox One, PS4, it's also going to be on. Uh, but it was demonstrated on a PC. Um. Anyways, I digress. The 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 lighting 
the shading, uh, the shadows, and the ambient noises along with uh, the Foley noises and the music for me really set the tone of Doom. Um, it was uh, very uh, intense. One of the things that I remember from the Doom game um, is that you know you walk in there and all of a sudden you've got demons in your face and everything like that. And it's very fast paced. It's no duck and cover or anything like that. Um, and that's there. That's what they are bringing to this particular game, uh, and of course enhancing it and everything like that. Uh, I, I will also say that the the crowd erupted um, uh, when the the uh, with all the new melee. Um, items. Uh, the different melee attacks that you do in this game are uh, pretty graphic but incredible. Uh, and so then, let's, hold on just a second, Joe. Let's go into a little bit of detail on this because Ian's eyes perked up when he heard melee. Yeah, so, last time I heard about any melee in Doom, it was a chainsaw or a fist with a ring that had a little spike on it. So the chainsaw is coming back. They did show that, and that was a fan favorite that everybody, of course, lost their shit over. What Jerry there was literally about. monkeys in the corner. Yeah, they were throwing, throwing shit. shit. Yeah, <laughs> they lost it. <laughs> what Jerry's referring to, as far as the melee is, so as you're shooting these demons and you're pretty much tearing them limb from limb, literally, um, there's a certain point where you can weaken the demon to a point where they start glowing, and they have this aura around them where you can actually go up to them and do a what I like to call a Mortal Kombat style finishing move where it's like a fatality, where it can be anything from you sweeping the demon from under their legs and then taking your boot and stomping their fucking face in and just blood and brain and shit everywhere to you actually going and doing a close-up punch through the gut and ripping out their organs and then they just falling over to uh, it, pretty much any kind of graphic over-the-top. That's what they're going back to the old Doom days. Over-the-top violence. This isn't some, you know, let's try to scare you. Let's make you walk into this room and, oh, you know, jump scare tactics and shit like that. No, you know what you're going to expect on the other side. You're going to expect a shitload of guys that want you dead. And that was the biggest thing that they wanted to express. And also what got my motor running, if you were to say, was running. hearing the doors open. The doors opening is the same sound effect as what you know and love. The <laughs> double barrel okay. shotguns coming back. Hang on a and second. They actually have alternate firing. What? Go ahead. Hang on a second. Okay, so you're telling me that they've got these. Let's just keep with the whole finishing move thing. So, how often does that happen? Is that going to happen? <laughs> like with every fucking. It, you don't. And you no. You do not have to. You have the option. If you overpower your shot with a shotgun and you're right next to them and you shoot them, you're not going to be able to. They're going to be split in half. They're going to be exploded. They're, you're going to have gibs everywhere. The I will stress that in the, I think they were just trying to show it off to me, and this is just my personal opinion, but they did show the melee stuff a little bit much. I didn't think that it got overkill, but it was getting to the point where I was like, okay, I've already seen that one twice. Okay, I've seen that one three times. That's the thing that I'm worried about is because um, I, I don't know if you guys ever played it. I played it very briefly before I start talking about it. Let me preface that. There was a game, a remake or a reboot or however you want to put it, that came out last gen on the 360 and PlayStation 3 for Splatterhouse. And uh, that game had almost the same idea where certain enemies you had to end them by doing a finisher move or it was like one of those things where you, that's how you get your health back or some other bullshit along those lines to the point where in the two to the three hours that I played it the one time, I saw the same one at least 15 times. And it was one of those things <laughs> yeah. where I was like, this is boring, this is stupid. Any game that causes you to have to do those type of like takedowns to gain something back, be it a higher score, uh, get your shields back, get your health back, get ammo or anything mm -hmm. along those lines, that's it's gonna it's gonna get old and stupid. Really. So to piggyback off of what you just said about getting health back, getting your shields back, that does not occur. This is ma mainly just for eye candy purposes in a way, if you like that type of stuff. But the thing that I also liked about what they showed in the game was there is no shield. You have health. You have to get health bars. It, 
it reminded me a lot of the new Wolfenstein that I played last year. I again, I have not played through it like you have, but the one thing that's different than in Doom that we saw that's different in Wolfenstein was one thing that I asked you about. What if you personally had a problem with was having to pick up every single item on the ground and not just have to run over it. In Doom, what we saw was as you ran over it, you picked up the ammo automatically. You picked up the health automatically. You didn't have to do that. So it was going back to the old school days. And this is a re... They didn't really call it a reboot, but that's pretty much what it is. It's a retelling is what they're calling it of the Doom story. It will take place on Mars. Hell has come loose. You have to send everything back to where they came from. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they did show the pulse rifle, which I always loved. That was my favorite gun. Uh, they didn't show a BMG 9000. Um, BFG. Or BFG, yeah, I'm BFG. sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm taking a nerd video. card and I'm oh. setting it on fire. <laughs> um, they didn't show that, but they did show a classic shot of it because how they start... Jerry, I'm sorry. I took this complete thing over because I'm remembering my article from start to finish. I apologize. It's okay. Um, I'm crying a little on the inside. Okay. I'll let you go Make back right moment. after I say this. In the beginning, what they wanted to stress to the fans was, we know what you love. They started showing screenshots of everything from the classic Doom days with the weapons to the enemies to everything that we know. And then they showed concept art, and then that's when they went to the demo. Um, they did, and Ian, I don't know if this matters to you. It didn't to me. I didn't give a shit. But I don't know why. I guess it was just the PR guy, the marketing guy that was just trying to see what everybody would think but he didn't realize who he was in front of, which was PC guys. He had to stress, and he, and I quote, this game will run in 1080p at 60 frames a second. On? No, on all systems. Yeah! I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Everybody's just like, who cares? And that's the thing. You're talking to a bunch of PC people. It, of course, is not going to matter to them because they can mod it and do whatever the fuck they want to do with it. Whereas on console, it is a little bit restricted. And, of course, everybody booed when they were talking about which I didn't understand why they had to announce it was coming to Xbox One and PS4 when anybody that bought Wolfenstein is going to get the fucking beta. So I was like, I don't know why you're telling the crowd this. Nobody cares. But, again, PR, marketing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, Jerry, I'll let you continue. Talk about, if you could the switch in that lab to open the door and what had to be done to open that door. You remember? With the glove in the hand. <laughs> Would you just let him fucking say it? He's like, look, <laughs> at, no, look at his face. He's like, I don't know. At this Why stage, you, you tell it? hold it all. Yeah, go ahead and tell us. Kyle. time in, in Seventh Guest when you had to play the, the cake game where you had to give off like two pieces of cake? <laughs> And each of them had to have a piece on it or not a piece on it, and, and that was like the puzzle, and you had to end up with no pieces. Jerry, you remember that, right? Because you had to start on the left-hand side and go down in a clockwork type. Jerry, you remember. You tell me about this. You had to yeah, go around. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what Mr. Flip42 is referring to is... Um, so you have to get into the, this lab uh, and the, the demo that they were showing, uh, and it's locked down. Um, and the uh, just real quick, I'm sorry, is my face popping up? Because it's not doing it on my end. Yeah, yeah you're up. Yeah, you're okay, fine. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so anyway, sorry. Uh, so he couldn't get in because it was restricted by a biometric hand reader. So the resourceful protagonist that you are, you see, you remember seeing a dead body when you walked in. So you kindly walked over to him, put your foot on his shoulder, and rip off his arm. And then kindly. you kindly take that <laughs> limb over to the biometric reader and slunk, slap that down. Really good Foley sound, by the way. I felt yeah. like I was there. If it was a scratch and sniff, it would have been great. But I, 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 I thought that was door. genius. I thought that, I thought that was... Perfect to show because everybody's like, he's wearing a fucking glove, it ain't gonna work. And of course, the door did not open. So I thought that right there was like, holy shit, this game could be something special. <laughs> when you have to, have to rip an arm off of a dead body that's been burned to ashes almost and slam it on there, it was awesome. Slap it yeah. on the door. So, of course, you, you encounter different demons and everything like that, and the Vithgots, their, their strengths and weaknesses. 
Um, you know, if you're really good, a lot of demons with a shotgun uh, are a one-shot kill. Um, uh, other ones, you have to switch to a different weapon and, and whatnot. So it's not so much of a hack and slash where you don't have to think about it. You do have to uh, be able to... Uh, switch that uh, up and everything. Uh, there was a couple of demons that you went into, and, and it did take, you know, three, four minutes for you to defeat them. Uh, and then, of course, the demo ends, um, and then they're like, do you want to see more? And everybody blew up again. Woo! Yeah, more! And they, they showed some more game footage and everything like that. And then it ended when you opened the door to the outside to move to a different structure with a demon that was probably 50 feet tall. Okay, so it was the cyber demon. Yes. Very good. Yep. Nice. And then Not and good. then I had to go change my underwear be, for two different reasons, but whatever. You one were thing that impressed me also one thing that impressed me also was in that second demo was the AI intelligence when you saw him shoot at the demons and they actually ran behind cover to get ready and they actually came out in waves and would plan their attack and then when also when it looked like a boomer to me but when a big old fat demon came out it was actually climbing the rock to come after you when you were trying to get away it was pretty neat to see uh, it wasn't your standard and I'm just thinking of all these FPS's that I've played like oh I don't know aliens colonial marines where a fucking alien will just stand there and smile at you like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. For those, I'm, those I'm, things, I'm, I'm, for I'm those those things, things God got really, really, really close to the camera with his grin all showing. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm relating this to the worst fucking game in the past, I don't know, five, ten years. I I'm sure there's it. others, but he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how much did you pay for it, Jerry? He did. I, I, it for okay. I would have loved it too if I didn't pay for it either. But also, I don't know if you, John um, or Jerry, did you guys notice also, it looked like there was a, I wouldn't call it a power-up move, but did you notice that he had like an alternate fire with some of the weapons, like the shotgun? Yes. Or he would like charge it up and shoot out about three or four rounds instead of just two or one? Yep. I thought that was unique. Oh, so, John, fucking elaborate on your statement. So, John, just saying, what yes, do you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I was John, there. Played, I, I had so. eyes, and I was <laughs> looking at it, and I had ears, and I was listening to it, and, and yeah, it was great. So, uh, John, you've played Doom 1 and Doom 2. My, uh, my orgasm as it was happening. Oh! Did you play, did you, John, did you play Doom 3? Yes. Okay, so you have played all three of them. I've played all the Dooms. So what did you think of this? It's perfect. I mean, it's it's a take back on the original Doom, modified for the current time frame. And it's just, it's beautiful. They've got the original sound effects when the doors open. They've got, and now I would love to really hear the original music played oh, dude, back again. Awesome. But, it was rock music whenever they did go into the combat scene, which was that it was. mess type. It reminded me a lot of Devil May Cry when you go into the like, battle sequence. <laughs> And then they put some highs in there. It had the fast try to rush through fight and try to survive type sound. That's what it had. That was it. Sorry. And Ian, just to give you a heads up as well, they did not talk a lot about it, but they did say this. Multiplayer. Whoa. Is coming but they don't want to talk about it right now, but they do know that we want fast-paced. They do know that we want classic deathmatch gameplay. They you know, know we want that? I don't oh, want know. it. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed Wolfenstein and its single-player-only campaign. That was really, really cool, in my opinion. And I would like to see a game such as Doom that really needs to kind of... Space Since it's single. such an old game, it needs to come out and, and have like a story, something that will make it binding and, and good and pure because nobody really remembers the multiplayer. It was always it was just the first Wait, game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. PC players know the multiplayer. Can you can you name a map? There are the levels in the game. What are you oh. talking about? 
Oh, okay. I never did the co-op. Like oh, I mean, for a LAN party, it was great. They didn't yeah. have... I don't think they even had internet uh, multiplayer, did they, John? We always did it LAN style. It Hang LAN. on a second. The uh, fuck are you drinking, Jerry? Uh, uh, Jerry, bring that Whoa, back. he's going... I was about to oh, say, shit. that's... Uh, Come on, dude. So a ton of right. vodka. <laughs> no, I gotta cleanse the palate of the freaking chocolate stout so I can move on to my next beer. All right, good. And that good. was that was uh, cleared with what? Water. water. See, here's my next beer. Agua. So, anyways, it was cool. It was, it, the game was great to see. Um, it was expected, like we said. I don't expect it coming out until I'm gonna say I'm predicting the 20th anniversary of QuakeCon. They will announce a release date. I'm gonna guess holiday of next year. Maybe that summer at the earliest. I don't oh, think I, I don't think it'll be holiday of next year because I don't think it's going to go up against Call of Duty. Okay, if they're saying blow Call of Duty out of the water. All right, my bad. I'm not. <laughs> no, Jerry. I'm not talking I'm holiday as in November. I'm, I'm right I'm there with you, Jerry. This game could, in my opinion, blow Call of Duty out of the water with as much love and care as put into it because. It's not a cookie cutter piece of bullshit like Call of Duty has become, but mm. Call of Duty has such a a die die hard uh, fan base that it doesn't matter if the game sucks; it'll sell gangbusters. Look at Ghosts; that is a pile of fucking piss, and so it's I still it. It, no. Don't fucking bother. Wow, if you, you want to play... show that to me so much. On the Xbox yeah, I know. I wanted to show that to you when the Xbox launched because it looked great. The story sucked. The multiplayer sucks. I would be more happy going back to my 360 playing Black Ops 2 because that multiplayer was good and fun and the story was better. Hmm. But yeah, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna play any Call of Duties, play the Black Ops series right now. Um, although. This next Call of Duty has got. Uh, I'm going to buy it because Kevin Spacey is in it. And, you, know, <laughs> you got the Exo suit, and you can leap large bounds in a single leap. And it's going to be. So, Titanfall? <laughs> <laughs> right there. Right there for you, buddy. Hey, man, I've been playing a lot of Titanfall. It's fun. Oh, my God. Yeah, Titanfall is a fucking blast. It won't be Titanfall because you won't be able to run along the wall. You'll be able to jump, but you can't. No, no, not, not. <laughs> uh, in nope. fact, the funny thing is, is so I was playing a lot of Titanfall when it first came out, and nobody in my clan—I well, think one other guy in my clan at the time had the game. Um, so they had a clan war in Call of Duty. So all of us got together and we went back into it. And the first thing I did is ran towards a wall and jumped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's funny to everybody that knows what I was doing, but people who didn't just thought this noob was, just, was lagging Dude, out. I don't want to see a video of that. Just watching this body jump against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. Just boop, beep. Oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Moving okay. right along. Move so it. that was revealed. All right. So I'm just going to back. I'm going to go from bottom to top on this little cheat sheet that we have here on this. Word doc, or whatever Google Doc. Uh, so John and I on Friday, the bottom to top, got a chance like to. <laughs> I don't want to be on the bottom. Got a chance to play The Evil Within, and this was the same demo that was allowed for um, press to play at E3. Um, two words describe this demo to me: Resident fuck, Evil. Fucked up. <laughs> no, no fucked it up. puts Resident Evil to shame. Uh, and it's got the Resident Evil feel, and I'm gonna tell because I played four, and it does have as far as control goes, it controls a lot like four. Does it have tank controls or does it have like actual movement controls? Like it's movement controls. It's not okay. yeah. It, it's not tank style. Where it's, you know, yeah, it's not striking or a lot of that. Um, you do move realistically. It, uh, they had an option to play on the PS4, or Xbox One. You know what I you know what I picked. Um, oh, you played on on the Xbox One. I completely understand. Yeah, Go you ahead. know it. They actually had three machines down, though. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to get into that debate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jerry. What the fuck? He's like, what the fuck? He just, oh, fuck it, gotcha. I don't so want to fuck it. All right. Uh, so to describe this game, like I said, fucked up. Um, 
What section did you play? What was going on? All right. So the section that I played, you were outside, and John, if I miss anything, please interrupt me. Um, I tell you what. Let me interrupt you. Yeah. Did John say anything about Doom? No, John, yes, please, John. You (laughs) need to describe this, (laughs) because I beat the demo before you did, which I was shocked that I made it through the entire demo, because I thought I was about to walk out a couple points where I was just like, fuck this. And John was actually shocked that I beat it, so... Uh, yeah. John, talk about Evil Within. No, Doom. <laughs> Wait, We're which one are we on? Doom. All right, <laughs> John, here's what you got to do. Here's what you got to do, John. Let's, to Doom. No, yes, go back. Backpedal. Let's talk about Doom for just a quick second. Make sure that oh. you get your bloody chips in on that. And then and then you go into the Evil Within and finish in on that. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Cheerio, cheerio. Okay, now, um, I actually really don't, I mean, other than what I had said about Doom, uh, just being a look back and a kick back on the classic originals. Um, oh, that's I, right, you did talk. See, the stout's yeah. already gotten to mm. Apparently. I mean, so it, it, I was it, right for continuing on with this Shut up! Not necessarily, because I'm still going to butt in here, because I don't want <laughs> to talk. Gosh, <laughs> I'm an ass. <laughs> yes, you are. How much of an uh, asshole dude, are you? I'm drinking more beer. <laughs> Now that's your buffalo butt. I was about to say, what is that that you're drinking, son? Oh, <laughs> that's his buffalo butt. <laughs> I didn't cleanse my palate good enough. <laughs> Chocolatey buffalo butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go, kids. Don't ever go from a freaking stout to it. What is an even? What is this even? Way? Red. It's a red. Yeah, yeah that was a. Talking. That's bad. I should have gone from a red to the stout. Went the wrong I, way. I was on mute the entire time. Yes, you were. I could see you making gestures, and I was like, I "Wait, you're missing out on Ian's greatness." <laughs> oh, that was highly disappointing. <laughs> much okay. story of my, my life. sex life. <laughs> <laughs> Not going there. Okay, so uh, even with neither do I. <laughs> we need a sad. <laughs> we need the sad trombone. <laughs> Oh, where am I at? Um, Hang on. Yeah, yeah, where are, are you? Good question. Where is it? Mr. Soundboard. <laughs> okay, so Evil Within. Um, yeah, it started out like that. Right. <laughs> that would be a great way. <laughs> and in fact, Ian kind of looking like that would be a great way to look for Evil Within. Damn it, did I click on shit? Un- <laughs> unintended. <laughs> I seriously had no intention of clicking that stuff. Yeah, right. That's three different clicks right there. So no, no, no. I must have hit the spin. He hit option. the randomizer. Remove all effects. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Sad, sad, sad. Okay. Um, so, how to describe evil within? Um, uh, with just words. Go walk through the with demo. Words. Walk through the demo. Okay, so explaining the demo. You start off in the middle of the forest. And you're walking towards this house that you... I'm like. done with it. I can't do it. <laughs> it's pitch dark. You've got a lantern by your side. You have a weapon with very limited ammunition. Uh, whatever it is that you happen to kill and you don't have to spend the extra shots on, that's generally what you want to kill. Um, so... You've got, you you enter the house, of course it's real creepy, you've got weird sounds taking place, and you hear it here and there. You see this guy walk down a hallway, and this door closes up behind him, and there's just, it it seals up. There's no way to get past it. And so you have to find three different locations within this house so that you can proceed forward to get through that door. Well, to get there, you've got to go past brain-eating people, uh, that are just like half Hold on. dead. Brain eating people that are half dead. Not zombies. Okay. Fucked up they... mental people. This yeah. is in a mental hospital, is what John forgot to state. Yeah. This takes this place like in a, a mental hospital. This it's section, because I've seen more of them that take place elsewhere. Yes. Right. This, section this takes is not place. like the scene that you probably saw where he actually arrives on the scene in a cop car and goes to investigate this hospital. Is that what you saw, Ian? 
No, I've seen where he was in some dilapidated house and had to set up traps. I saw one where he oh, was in yeah. some place, and then there was, I saw one where he was walking on the streets and there were giant holes in the place. Oh, okay. I haven't seen that one, but uh, like when he's in that cabin and he's got to set the traps up, I've seen, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, John. So, so whatever. Yeah. Know. You're going through. You're you're having to hunt down these these rooms that have the solution to get this door open. Now, the solution to get this door open is to actually probe into somebody's head, into the psychological regions, fear, happiness, coercion, and you're probing into them with a needle. And this the brain itself is yeah, the, the brain is it's an exposed. Fucking it's brain. a real person. When I walked into the first room, I'm sorry, John, I have to interrupt. When I walked into the first room and you see this eye staring at you and it just looks like it's a dead head and then you actually see the eye glance over at you while you're trying to poke the brain. Fuck wait a second. You. Yeah, there the was a Wait, no, 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 hold on. When did the Grateful Dead make it into this game too? <laughs> and uh, when, when did this become James Cameron's avatar where I'm going to have to like mind fuck somebody to get the solution to get out of some place? Mm-hmm. You have to extract the liquid out of the brain. It's blood. Okay, so now, so now it's Repo, the genetic blood. rock opera, and we're trying to get the what, what, Zytrate out of their fucking skulls? Is that what it is? I have no <laughs> idea what that is, but it probably sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very much generally fucked the hell up. There will definitely be points where you're walking through a dark hallway and you get pulled somewhere, or you get attacked by this phantom. And if you don't run from the phantom, you're gonna take damage. Wait, okay, so is this phantom like a ghost? Is it, would you call it a wall rider? Mm. Like Phantom Brave where they appear out of nowhere and it's a dark haired girl like the ring. Okay, you mean like the grudge? Or the grudge. Any of those yeah. movies. Yeah, it's kind of got that effect to it. Yeah. No, is this the what was it? The eight-armed, blood-covered vixen that nope, comes crawling out of the hole? No, we did not get to see that. No, this is your standard two arm. It's a. This was a cleaner thing. demo. It did not. Yeah, this demo didn't scare the shit out of me. It more was fucked with my brain than anything it will else. Definitely make you jump. I, okay. When well, did you jump? Wait, 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 wait! Hang on a second. Did you have to do any combat in this? Yes, and yes, that's why I didn't shoot and kill. John, did you have to do any combat in this? Yes, oh, you sorry. do. <laughs> you have a weapon. You have a pistol. Shotgun. Okay, you know, please elaborate. How you know when? So what did? What system did you play it on? Did you play it on the PC, the PlayStation Four, or the Xbox One? PlayStation Four. Oh, uh, dick. Um, <laughs> I so sat next to Scott, and the other systems were down. Oh, don't even use me as a reason, bitch. Whatever. That's fine. That's fine. You know, that's that's all right. You know, Scott's one of those zeitgeist motherfuckers anyway, so, you know, go ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so let me ask you, when you, were, uh, when you were playing and you had to use your weapon, mm -hmm. how did it feel? It's, the aiming is not, I mean, it's okay. It does a good job. You have the ability to throw bottles to distract, uh, at which point in time you can then re-aim down the, down the sights and take down your target. Uh, it reminded me of The Last of Us. It reminded me of The Last of Us. Yeah. Okay, well, for someone who hasn't played The Last of Us... God damn it, dog. Tell me... Tomb Raider. How, uh, Tomb Raider. Okay. I'm like trying to like clean my nose without being on camera, and this fucking dog's not making it easy. Hi, puppy. Um, okay, so it, like Tomb Raider. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so Scott, I hate to put you on a pedestal when we're trying to get John to have a section to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but you played Resident Evil Four. Is yeah. the is the aiming down the sight? Is it very similar to Resident Evil Four, where it's over the shoulder? I wish it was closer over the shoulder and zoomed in like Resident Evil Four. It is not. It's like any third-person shooter today. Where you, know what? you know what? I go, okay, here's what's going to happen. If, yeah. if they send us a review copy, the three of you fucktards are coming over to my place, and we're going <laughs> to see... Hopefully it's late enough to where we could stream it so that we don't break any non-disclosures or whatnot. Um, because you guys are going to watch me frustratedly try to get through this fucking thing while someone looks up a goddamn walkthrough. i got to go take care of this dog. John, why don't you continue talking? <laughs> um, 
Scott, where did I leave off? I mean, what do I? What so, do we have left that we can cover and elaborate on this? Talk about what would occur after you would extract the fluid. What would we? Well, you'd have to go back to the main door and verify well, hold on. the fluid went not, through. Not, not that, not that. Think <laughs> about after we would extract the fluid. What would occur as we were leaving that well, room? Who would you encounter? Oh, you'd go back and you'd see a scene that was occurring within that room. With who? Did you not follow along with that? No, apparently I did not. Oh, my God. Okay. Sorry. So this <laughs> whole scene was after we would extract the fluid from each one of these different brains, you'd see Giggity. a cut scene between a doctor and what sounded to me like his son because he kept referring to as he was the mistake. He could have been a patient, too, that he was experimenting on, but they didn't really dive into the relationship between this man and younger person. It was like probably about a, to me it sounded like a 12 or 13-year-old boy, um, talking about his frustration, how he couldn't control what he had, and the dad or doctor or whoever this guy was was telling him, no, no, you're okay, we have to just run a few more tests. You will. It was very, like I said, this whole thing was fucked up to me because I wish I would have been able to talk to the developer afterwards to try to get a little bit more information, but all I got out of this was, okay, this reminds me a little bit of Fear, where you're following the story, trying to figure out the story of this little girl, and you have to fight these enemies and shit. Um, you had to fight shit in Fear? I thought that was only in Conquer. Did you play Fear 3? <laughs> Did you play Conquer's Bad Fur Day? I played the one on Xbox that was not Bad Fur Day. No, was it wasn't Xbox. Bad Fur Day. It was uh, Live and Reloaded, because that was the one yeah. I played too. But yeah. you, you actually fought a pile of shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a shit demon. Well, yeah, it was a big singing pile of shit. It's called Gotha, or whatever the fuck they're called from Dogma, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see this motherfucker. Oh, that's... <laughs> Great scene. Jerry, have you seen it? Unmute yourself. Have I seen what? <laughs> Unmute Dogma. yourself. No. Wait, no. Have you seen any of the Kevin Smith movies? No. Okay, I Do need you know to go Kevin by Smith Casey is? and Amy, and then I will have the entire... I got it. Oh, do you? All right, we got to do that. I have the entire collection. I'm not looking forward to Tusk, but that's on another related note. Whatever. Anyways, I even um, have. To, hold on, real quick. I even have Clerks, yeah. the animated series. Me too. Oh, all right, cool. Here, I'll get it while uh, John keeps talking. John, keep talking. About what? I have keep nothing more. About the, okay, I'll ask you questions, John. So <laughs> you ask it. I'll try to give you answers. All right, good. good Are you going to play this game? Uh, maybe. It'll would have you, to be discounted. Would you, okay, I was about to say, would you spend $60 on this game? Oh my fucking god, this dog! From a from an art standpoint, yes. From a, do I really want to sit there and get myself scared for the next how many hours? No, not necessarily. Welcome back, Ian. Okay, Thank I'm back. We're answering. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Scott. No, screw you, we're not repeating. <laughs> all right, that's fine. So, um, so God damn it, now I'm all hooked up. Ian. Um, Ian. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you for those of you here? on the, the, the pod mean, we're hmm. signed, Autograph? signed autographed clerks, and he has clerks animated. Yeah. Animated, not anime. I well, said animated. Tell, well, hey, don't tell them. All the anime would be fun. Them. If they want to see it, they can come to the YouTube site and watch the video. Boom. Shakalaka. <laughs> For those Thank of you, you who are listening, we have, we, we have stuff on the YouTube channels that you should see. Yeah? <laughs> and you can actually look at the minute that you're listening to and just skip over all the other shit if you really don't want to listen to all this again. There is, mm. there is images, y'all. Yeah? No, yeah. that is the image. Oh my god, so dude, I swear, anytime somebody does like a uh, a bad German accent, I I see this one scene in Wolfenstein, where um, there was now everybody saw the trailer on the train, right, where the old lady stopped him and he had to point at the cards. Did you guys see that trailer for Wolfenstein? I didn't watch any trailers. Oh well, you you pussy. Everybody else. I played the fucking game at. Quick, God, I didn't. Shut up! I don't, you didn't finish the game. I did. 
I played what I needed. Go John, did, did you shut the fuck up? It's a good game. John, did you see the trailer on the train? Uh, no. <gasps> uh, Jerry, did you see the trailer on the train? I have not been on a train in quite some time. <laughs> you know what? If he was close, I'd smack him for you. Fuck <laughs> all over you guys. Okay. Shut up, Scott. Nobody's asking you. I didn't say anything. They all know what no, you're talking you're about. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, okay. There was this scene. There was this scene in the game, and, and I'm assuming you guys have no intention of ever playing the game unless it's like five dollars on Steam. Is that right? Look at me holding that cup, just that way. Oh, maybe um, fifteen. There's yeah, 15. maybe fifteen. Okay, well, there's this scene where that lady gets jacked the fuck up, and at one point she like crawls up and gets in your face and is saying something to you. And the actress that's doing it is trying is having to do a German. I don't know if it was a German actress that was speaking English. So, if I'm saying this wrong, please accept my apology. But she was trying to do a German accent through a mouthful of blood and teeth, and it. It, it haunts me to this day listening <laughs> to her tell me how she's going to track me down and kill me when she's like gurgling and like fucking bone is falling out of her mouth as she's saying it. In that case, I'm going to finish the rest of this uh, podcast in bad German. <laughs> <laughs> and to okay, all of so our what German listeners out there, there, we apologize. <laughs> We are going to enjoy the German beer, yeah? Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. German, yes. It is very good, um, yeah. So, so what else on Evil Within was there to say? So, uh, uh, Scott, since you so half-heartedly want to be the one talking and John so wholeheartedly doesn't want to be the one talking. Let me go ahead and, and start phrasing these questions towards you. Um, at any... Shut the hell up, John. We're talking. <laughs> shut up, John. Well, let, the, let, the adult... let, let, let the girls talk now? <laughs> so, so, so here's the thing. We complain about John not talking, and then when he starts talking, we tell John to shut up. Yeah. Yeah. Is okay, I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page with yeah, that. That red-headed stepchild type of situation. <laughs> Shut the so, fuck up. So, Scott, yeah. uh, at any point during this demo... Well, let, let me ask you. Were you wearing headphones when you were playing yes. the demo? Yes. Okay, was the volume up fairly loud? Yes. Did you feel immersed? No, because there was other people in the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we did have the lights turned down dark, so it wasn't dark. I probably did they have would somebody be allowed... flicking you on the side of the head as you're trying that to play the game? That would have actually been interesting, and I probably would have got the shit scared out of me by that. They I did think have playing it, alone... Have walking through in there. I think playing alone in your house would provide a different experience than what I played at QuakeCon, of course. Okay. Well... I well, have to ask guess... John this question, though. Playing the demo... Did your lantern ever burn out? Uh, once or twice. How did you relight it? Nine With just... a lighter? <laughs> no. Well, all right. Fuck. <laughs> Actually, okay. So I'll get back to that. If I'll I recall, I just hit... Uh, was it X? Oh, is that all you had to do was press a fucking button? Yeah, and it would reset itself. Oh, my God. <laughs> what else are you going to do on a controller? I don't know. Swipe the fucking touchpad. <laughs> Nobody uses it's that. It's a flick. It. It's a flick. You have to flick. Oh, it's, a, it's, a it's a flick. Start. It's a flick. Okay. Kind of no, like flick. the owl it's in, uh, you have to, in Kill spark. Switch Engage or whatever the fuck that game was. Uh, <laughs> Shadowfall Kill Zone. <laughs> you um, had to correct me, you piece of shit. So, um... Ian, since you've seen gameplay, did you see what they had to do to the bodies after you kill them? To yeah, make sure they're them dead. On, set them on fire? Is that right? Yeah, so I, yeah, so I fucked around with that because I wanted to see if they'd actually come back to life, and they do. It's fun to watch. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, it's fun to watch. Okay. No, I knew it was gonna. So again, if you already know, and that's the thing. I'm sure there's more fucked up stuff in this game, and that's why I'm saying. What I played did not scare the shit out of me. I'm sure there's other stuff that would. That hospital scene that I saw at E3 earlier this, uh, about a month ago or whatever, where they're in a hospital, and you saw that eight-legged piece of shit come out that of a body. beat grinder scene where that guy clips his that Achilles tendon and he has to get out of that room that's nothing but fucking yeah, blades closing in. Around. I thought I was going to play something like that. Because you can't hide under anything. You can hide under a bed. 
You can hide in a closet. You can hide anywhere pretty much when it triggers for it that you would be able to be out of harm's way. I wanted to try to get that feeling that I saw when, like you're talking about that meat cleaver guy, I wanted to have somebody fucking chase me. So what I did was, <laughs> I walked down this hall and already, <laughs> I saw... <laughs> I like how you started with, so what I did was... <laughs> So, I walked down the hallway, and That's I had my flash arrow that um, you, get, you get a bone arrow, of course, just like every other fucking game. You got a crossbow, and you can unlock different arrows. You have a freeze arrow. You have a flash arrow that will do, like, a flashbang attack. When did we start talking about thief? I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> so... I saw this, you know, one of the fucked up, whatever, insane asylum people that's, you know, moaning and groaning. I'm like, all right, you're behind a curtain. Ooh, I see your feet. Uh, you're not really going to scare me. Boop. So I shot the flash arrow. I heard him go, burr, and they ran into the, I ran into this room because I was like, come find me. I started kicking doors, the door open. I started pounding around because they said the more noise you make, the more that they're going to alert somebody to come after you. So I'm like, I want somebody to come after me. I want to experience some kind of tension. So I hid in the closet. I waited about five minutes. I didn't time it specifically, but I had my phone on, my, on the desk right next to me, and I was looking at it. Well, you should have, you dumb son of a they bitch. They never came out there because they were glitched behind a fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> and Don and I both, I, I don't know if you related to this, the load times were long. Yeah... And right, right now, here's the screen question. Screen tearing was bad. And and so now here's the thing that I want to just place on the table for the two of you. So two of you played it. Jerry, did you play? He uh, didn't have the press access. He could no, have went I to the will, show floor. I will next time have press access. Okay. okay. Well, so at so this you, point, man. yes. Okay. That's fantastic. So at this point, I just want to go ahead and, and cover a quick thing that needs to be fixed in the future. You got two guys, you got two possible ways to play it, and you both yeah. played it on the same system. Yeah, whatever. Well, here's the problem, though, Ian, was three of the Xbox Ones were down for whatever reason, and all the Xbox Ones were being used that were available. Microsoft. What the I'm hell not is trying to make an excuse. Anything, I told John to go check them out, and then I, I saw that they're all being used. All right, whatever. Whatever. But on, uh, I don't think the load times will be that much different. I'm not trying to. They probably won't at all. The only thing that I'm referring to is that we have no basis to. Oh to sure. Argue I back understand. And Unlike the screen tearing or the textures well, looking like shit. Or did it yeah. run on Unreal Engine? Was there that two second pop in on the textures? Uh, I didn't. We, we didn't even get to <laughs> no. see. The problem that I had, we didn't even get to see who uh, is doing the engine for this game. The only problem, uh, like as far as screen tearing goes, was so you have two options when you open a door. You can open it very. You can open it or you close it. Sure. All right. <laughs> That's generally how a door works. Well, and so, last you had two different ways you can open the door. You can open it quick or you can open it slow. That's <laughs> exactly what I was about to get to. So you can open it and make like a Splinter fucked cell. up eerie sound where it's a creaky sound. As all three of us <laughs> <laughs> do eerie creaky door. And then you hear it go, ear. <clears throat> or you can be like me and I'm like, fuck this, I'm Rambo. And I'm going to kick the fucking door open. Go, Bram! And See, that's why I think you came out of it without any fear is because you actually ran into every room like, I don't give a shit, come at me, you self okay. motherfuckers. It would be different <laughs> if I ran into the room looking down at the ground and like, I don't want to see anything, let me go, let me go. Or running into the room going straight forward. That's how I did it. Blam, blam, click, click. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, right. <laughs> so anyways... Mm -hmm. That's Evil Within. I don't know if it's going to be good. I Like I said, if I get a review copy in, I will request an Xbox One. Okay, and that's fine. And I will gladly play it, and I will, yeah. uh, I'll submit my review to you and then to our site as well. So if there's some other place that you need to be placing it as well as no. with our site. Okay. Nope, I'm doing it strictly through us. Okay, so then I will, I will, I will review it to the best of my ability. Uh, if we are giving, if we are given a review copy, I will finish the game. Um, if I am gifted a copy, I will call it on that. I do want to make a quick statement. 
as I hold up an Emery board and shake it at my camera. Um, I do want to make a quick statement about the game uh, Outlast and how much uh, how much viewership it has created, uh, be it the people that were watching on Twitch or the people that have watched it on the YouTube. Um, because of that, I will be picking up Alien Isolation because that's the closest game to Outlast that will be new and fresh. Um, and I, I'm going to do kind of a quick little plug for us here. The first time I play it will be during our Extra Life charity stream. And uh, it will close out my charity stream. Uh, I haven't quite decided if I'm doing 24 or 12 hours of a stream because I want to be cognitive when it comes to playing it because I don't want to have to play a section again. Uh, also, I will not be archiving anything that happens during that live stream for the charity. So if you solely want to watch the... Um, the Alien Isolation stream, you will need to watch it that evening or that night or that morning, depending on when I'm doing it. You'll have to watch it then because I'm not going to put it up on YouTube. I'll put everything else up on YouTube if I don't finish it that night. But other than that, that's 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 all i got to say about it. But I am looking forward to Alien Isolation. No, I am not pre-ordering it because I think pre-orders are the fucking devil. <laughs> and... Um, I, I would love to play the DLC that's going to be the pre-order bonus, but if if I don't get to play it because I don't pre-order it, I don't get to play it because I don't pre-order it. If it costs $5 at some point down the line, I might buy it, depending on how much I enjoy the game. But that is is what's important. It's like, if I enjoy the game, then I might do it. Did if you not, hear then... that you could play through the entire game without killing anything? Well, as far as I was led to believe to begin with it was like Outlast where there was no combat where you're hiding from the xenomorph and mm -hmm. trying to get around it just like the big fucker in Outlast mm -hmm. but now I find out that there is combat when it <laughs> comes to other humans or androids that come to the place you have to deal with them in a particular way which it, it, it's starting to get to the point where it's like you know what this is probably going to be 60 bucks that I'm wasting or I'm Don't using say that yet I'm I'm using to entertain other people while I don't enjoy the game. <laughs> I will feel for you if it is another Aliens Pillion. Yeah, I tell bullshit. you what, I will drop the change on it in a heartbeat if I if we can get enough people to come watch our streams for the extra life and we raise enough money. Not even enough. If we raise any money for for the Children's Foundation that we're raising for the Children's Hospital. God damn it! I don't even know what I'm talking about. What's what's the uh, what's the thing again? <laughs> Children's <laughs> Medical Miracle Network. Thank hospitals. you, Jerry. So that Thank includes you, Cook and uh, Children's Medical Dallas and Plano, uh, as far as locally that we're talking about. Yes, and you know, as long as we're making money for them, that's all that matters. Um, I'm not going to complain about you know pain or anything along those lines, but uh, there'll be more information as to exactly what everyone will be doing per their their own stream. Um, as far as I'm aware, we're going to do sep four separate different streams. Uh, I don't know how we're going to schedule them out. If <clears throat> if I'm going to be doing 24 and some of the guys will be doing 8, 6, 12, whatever, um, we'll definitely make sure that we have some type of notification up on our website, on our group, on our page, on Facebook, and stuff along those lines so that everybody knows when and how to see us play. We will have answers for you shortly, yeah? Uh, oh I do. Uh, thank you, German. <laughs> uh, I do have a question, uh, Ian. Are you, now? I know you did gameplay, and we've got all of those up there with commentary and everything like that, and it's quite entertaining. My question to you: Are you going to be doing an official review? Not to put you on the spot, but I'm putting you on the spot. Um, um, well, you know what? I still owe Child of Light a a review, even though I think during our last podcast I was drunk enough to just spout out what my score would be. Right. Um, but I, I do think that after all that I need to sit down and I need to create a review for Outlast. I, even though that game has been out for quite some time, it recently came out on the Xbox One, and we all know that's the superior system and that's the only one that I own, so therefore that's why I played it on that system. <laughs> but I would, yeah, I'll, I'll come up with a, with a, with a review. Just... I have to do one of these things where I have to put myself in a bubble and not look at the views on YouTube to point that as to how it was. Hey, you uh, there like are... not watch the spoilers. <laughs> you can well, watch the ending of it before. No, I mean, the I no, I finished the game. I played through the game. Uh, yeah, I, I did have to use a walkthrough. 
myself once, and then I called out to chat, I think, twice to get me through sections that were literally pissing me off. <laughs> I'll go into that in my review, though. Jerry, good call. Good call. I do need to do a review for it. Bam! More content coming to you soon. Okay. Hey, speaking, right. of, speaking of more content, um, one of the things to look forward to is a weekly news recap. And this is actually news to John and Scott. So, really? yeah. We, we have uh, Obsidian helping us out now. Uh, he's agreed to help us with just a weekly news recap. Why, why are you slow? Okay, okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's, okay, that's really loud. That's clipping. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll do this. Okay. No, hey. seriously. I, that makes me happy that we're going to have something like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Tell him thank you so much. I will definitely reach out to him to thank you. Yeah, and uh, one of these days we're going to have to get him in on a podcast as a special guest. Absolutely. Very soon. Another guy that's assisting us with the other project that we're working on. Yeah. We'll have them on to give them the props that they deserve for what they're doing. Um, and they, they will have their proper recognition on the sites, and on the groups, and on the pages and whatnots, um, and on the Twitters and whatever. The, you'll, you'll see their names properly displayed. You'll probably see their faces properly displayed at some point or fashion. Yeah, Super Marley, Barley uh, brother picture. Super Marley brothers? Wow. <laughs> then we started getting into the Super Marley brothers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now we're going to move our show to Colorado. One love, one life, let's get together and feel all... That sounds like Mexican instead of Jamaican. <laughs> Fuck so, um, indie games. Let's talk about those. Uh, Scott, uh, you want to lead with uh, no, Rack? Jerry, you talk somewhat for a little bit, please. Oh, son of a monkey's uncle. Hey, you, you talk been... about Zen Pads. You, you enjoyed it more than I did. Yeah, what? You know. No, don't ask get... me. You just. You, you're still going to get it. I enjoyed it more, so go ahead. Yeah, so there was an indie game uh, that we did. Uh, you know what? We need to reach out to them and see if they'll send us the video. I will. Um, I got their website brought up. So. Okay, cool. So it's uh, by Lim Interactive out of Colorado. So they did some traveling to come to Dallas for QuickCon. Uh, it's called Zen Paths with a, a Z um, on the paths. Where did Ian go? You son of a monkey's uncle. I'm talking to people that already know it. <sighs> Anyways. Um... <laughs> Well, it's a PC game or whatever, so he probably doesn't care, so go ahead and continue. It, it is a PC game, and it is controller um, oh. compatible. Uh, unfortunately, we played pretty early in QuakeCon, and we had to play on a laptop screen. I saw later on that they had like a 23-inch screen oh set up finally. That would have helped out, because... So the premise of the game is similar to that of uh, Super Smash Brothers on Nintendo, except that you're Samurai, and uh, you can do free for, free for all, or you can do co-op, um, or you can do like a two-on-two -two type setup. So it, it, they do have levels, uh, and it kind of puts some puzzles, uh, for a lack of a, a better term, into that. And so, you know, myself, Scott, Scott's brother, and John played, um, and we all had a great time. It was fun. Uh, they they they, set, they started they sucked us in like oh the the uh, walkthrough to learn the game only takes five minutes, <laughs> eighteen minutes later we were done, but I just think we were having too much fun and whatnot, um, and we were trying to learn everything as we go. So y you've got um, you know the the uh, tutorial part you're going through and you're you basically you can move with your left joystick and you can paint with your right joystick and what you're painting is temporary um, walls or temporary uh, walking paths or something like that. You can lay down spike strips um, for fun. You can erase a bridge while your friend John is walking across it as he falls into lava. Um, you can, uh, and so there's like a capture the flag setting too where it's capture the panda. And um, <laughs> it's literally so you, you, you start off, you know, two on two on your left and right screen, and then the panda drops in the middle, and you go in and you get the, the panda. 
And um, basically what Scott and I were doing, Scott and I were on a team, is if one of us got the panda, the other one was trying to run defense. So the other one was drawing walls or putting down spike strips. And you can also melee attack the, the people too with your samurai sword. Um, John and uh, Sean had a really good rhythm on the last game uh, as far as doing that kind of co collaboration, because uh, I think John was also painting at the same time. That that was one of the difficulties when you're first starting out, is learning how to move and paint at the same time. But I can definitely see you getting used to that. Um, the, the cool thing with the game, though, is that you can still progress through the game and you still have a fun time by doing basic things. Or if you're an advanced player doing all these different painting things and using your special abilities and all this other stuff that builds upon each other and you can enjoy it from that standpoint or you can be like probably how I would play it and do basic stuff and just get through the level and whatnot. So I think it has a wide um, scope for each type of player uh, to be able to enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, if we can get those videos from them, we'll post those up on on YouTube and whatnot too. Because to me, they were quite hilarious. Um, but Zen Paths, uh, I think I'm going to get. Uh, I and, and especially if you know other people uh, on on Steam get it. It's definitely a co-op game. It's a LAN party game. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be. So it's on PC. PC yes, it only. is a PC only because it's an indie. Since it's indie, and it will work on your computer. Yeah. Okay. Good. No, <laughs> trust me. If you want to go go to their website, I'll let you know what it is after. But um, the graphics are very, very. It's like 16-bit. I would maybe. even almost go about saying eight, but well, there is okay, more colors than eight. Uh, compare it to Risk of Rain because that's a game that it's we all like, like that. It's okay. Like that. Yeah. My my only complaint. And this is my complaint when it comes to Super Smash Brothers, which is why I don't play it all that much. When when you fill up the screen, your characters get super small, and I always have in Super Smash Brothers, I always had a difficult time of keeping track of my character. Just um, stare at your character. What's the, what's the problem? <laughs> I've already talked to him about it. But it's anyways, okay. on on Zen Paths, I wish the characters were slightly bigger. Yeah, they are pretty tiny. It is almost a risk of rain size, and if you want to um, try to relate to that, it is very tiny. The levels are bigger than the actual characters you play as. A um, couple cool side features, Jerry, um, that were left out was uh, online multiplayer, not just LAN. Oh, it is? Also, yes, okay. they said that they will be having online multiplayer. Also, they will have, or they do have, a level editor where you can create your own levels. So that would make for some interesting um, different types of game modes. I wish they had more game modes. That was my only thing. Is they only showed us capture the panda or whatever the fuck it was called. Is that uh, is, is it? I'm sorry, man. Is it is it close to being finished? Is it finished? They've worked on it for three years. Three they years. told us they're not ready yet, and they said they're not even ready yet for press. They're just bringing it to show to see what people think as far as um, gamers Here's their free are concerned. press. Yeah, so I mean, if they're not I mean, ready for press, why were they showing it to you guys? Well, they were showing it to everybody. They actually had a booth open to anybody in public because they want to get people's thoughts and they want to know what people think. It was a, like I said, the demo. It was very short. It was three levels that you could only see. I'm sure they got more. No, that's I hope. They had loaded. Well, that's why I'm hoping they that there more. is more. They didn't have it loaded. Oh, uh, well. Like I said, I know Jerry, you liked it, so that's what matters. Is if somebody likes it, somebody's gonna buy it. I would pay maybe five bucks for it. How much are they? Are, are they? they did they already stay? No. Okay, so they're they, not they talking. They were about very. Anything. Yeah, they're very. Um, either they didn't want to disclose it, or they honestly do not know at this time what their timeline is. The of I, I um, think they just don't you know. know. Because they were, they were. The, what I got from them is that they were looking for feedback from the players, you know. Because I wonder if they're looking for investments, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> they do a Kickstarter. Because you they, know, well, you uh, hear them on stage, Jerry. They kept saying, "We don't have any money, so here's some free candy." They were. I mean, I don't know. It could have been a joke. Like, hey, everybody has uh, got their own. But it seemed like to me well, what would we them. do if we were there promoting the site? Well, we don't have well, any free, yeah, like, free exactly. candy. Some free candy. <laughs> exactly. No, I would I would give them a high five. 
I can I get a high five? Or you just hold out your hand and open it and say, I give you hope. Come here, little boy. I oh, got you're some saying candy like this. You. Okay, I thought you were like... Yeah, you drop it in their hand. You ever see Family Guy? Yeah. No. Uh, Not recently. Scott, this isn't a mic drop. This is an old... All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is an open mic night. <laughs> So, John, what did you think of it? Yeah, what did you think of it, John? Yeah, it yeah was... John, what did you think of it? <laughs> hey, Ian, what did you think of it? I, love, I, I thought it said, was phenomenal. Yeah. The layout of the levels were just shut up, in shut such... Up, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Hey, I like Ian's faux review. John, <laughs> freaking talk. <laughs> it was okay. I mean, it was... It, 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 it was what it was. It was an indie game with characters that were way too damn small to keep track of. But it had kind of that... I mean, it had decent gameplay to it. It was entertaining. It was so fun to see my stuff off. Is that one do, my thing? I? do I have low no. expectations? Hey, you low just like simple fun. And whatever makes it fun for you is what matters. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it, gaming is all objective. I love Super Smash Brothers. Why the fuck don't you like Super Smash Brothers? I don't have a Nintendo number one. Well, I, I don't have a Wii. Hey. I actually do have a Wii. But yeah, you have a Wii. You have no excuse to not have a Smash Brothers game. No, but then again, I have a shit ton of uh, Nintendo systems in my closet, and I've only got one of the Smash Brothers. It's not that you have low expectations. You just you found it entertaining. I found it very. I guess you hooked onto it a lot quicker than I did because I had trouble understanding everything that we were supposed to be doing, and the controls to me were not responsive as much as I wish they were. The controls were not that great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's it's a very unique way way to play. Running and moving your character with the left joystick, and then using your okay. right joystick to try to paint and trying to jump. And it's a little bit too much. It, there's a learning curve. Okay, so you guys were using some type of a joypad. We had to use. Yeah. Yeah. It was an controller. Xbox controller. That's right, it was. And they were wireless, so that's what the problem that I think we were all having, because Sean was even having issues with it, noticing that his controller was on. I didn't have any in, lag. In the game, because he, well, he didn't, wasn't having lag. It wasn't responding to him. Because, remember, he was stuck at the front for, like, a few minutes, and we're like, dude, move. And he's like, I'm trying. It's not doing So it might have been... It could have been a bad battery issue. It could have. And you can't blame I mean, him on Like I said, it could have been just the controller, but the controls to me were... I don't know. It was not not as responsive as I had hoped. Well, what were you looking for? Current gen? Uh, uh, well, because current. Sure like, this when I hit a button, it no. When I hit a button, it does something. It would like take two to three seconds when I hit yeah, X. It's probably it built on an X gen, but it was running on a laptop, dude. Oh, if it was running on a laptop, you got to give it a little bit of credit. Those yeah. memory chips. Well, then they should have thought about that before having a. I don't know. You know, they have no investors. They have no exactly. money. They have no free so candy. So way. therefore, you need to shove it up your fucking ass. They could have asked me to bring my tower over. I'd have been more than happy to hook up my rig. Yeah, and... see, you got to play a game that somebody's working on for free. They showed you something. Your complaints need to stop. Because exactly. if you were building a game, hey, they're, you valid. Were they're valid complaints. I'm not arguing with your complaints. What I'm stating is that you need to take into consideration that somebody was running this on a laptop, not a tower, and they were having to use wireless controllers because they probably had more of those. And more, what did they have, like one or two dongles to like tie that into? Probably. No yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, then I call fault on, I mean, again, that's still then they, I don't know, I'm not trying to call them out, but it's like... Then for what it is, for it is to it's beta. It was it's in beta. development. No, 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 I would alpha. say that's more alpha. It was probably... It's got to be alpha. If you really think about it. Right, whatever. It, it wasn't ready. Let's just... But say it, it was what it was, and it played like you would expect a game that's in and, alpha. And you're also talking about to play. four inputs. When we actually get it, we're going to have one input into the game uh, uh, into True. a computer rather than four inputs into the computer. So Absolutely. It'll, it will run better than it did for us. That's I don't want to dog them because, first of all, they're a nice group of guys. Great. Second of all, I, I think the concept is is pretty killer. I, I like it. So there you go. Jeez. Okay, so on this note, while while the guys transition into another game that they played from QuakeCon, I thought I'd make it an apparent statement that I'm going to get up and get another beer. I'll be right back. No, you're just now getting at number two. 
Oh, no, 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 no. This is number three. You go number three? What's it going to be? Number three. No, okay, so ch- take a look at the size of these cans. These cans yeah. are about as tall they're as my pint. can. Yeah, yeah they're pint. Uh, it's probably going to be a Temptress, um, uh, a Lakewood really Lager Temptress. So I'll be right back. back. Make sure you update that dock. I will, oh, dickhead. <laughs> I'm an ass. Oh, the dock. Why is it that we need to update the dock for that? Because it go- I put information on the site. No. Oh. So you know, I, I give I give information about the beer, uh, about send, you know. Send them to my untapped page. <laughs> or you could update the site for me. Why would I want to do that? I don't know. I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> no, you. I got less time than you do. Shut up. Are you sure about that? I go to college. Shut up. Uh, I got a pregnant wife. Gaming podcast. So next <laughs> on the list is Rack by Final Boss Entertainment, and this is a game that I actually got notified about prior to QuakeCon from a uh, site that I write for, or will soon be not writing for. But anyways, um, it is a first-person cell shaded shooter. Really resembles the gameplay of your old-fashioned Quakes, Dooms. Actually, the guy that did the soundtrack to this game is the guy that did the soundtrack to the first Doom game. So it's a lot of that old school, like Jerry w- or John, I think you were the one asking or requesting the old Doom soundtrack and then new Doom demo or whatever it was. So if you want to hear Doom music, play Rack. Um, that's exactly what this sounds like. It's fast paced. I'll listen to and, Doom music. I'll just go back and play Doom. All right. Anyway, <laughs> this looks a little bit better than Doom. And plays a little bit better, in my opinion, except you got melee uh, that's a way OP, or for those that don't know what that means, overpowered. Um, well, OP you. has multiple meanings, man, seriously. Ian, i got to ask you, did you ever play a game on the Xbox called 13, X111, or III? Hang Scott, on, because I muted myself while I got up and walked away, because it's Scott, the proper you thing to do. That. Well, I know um, you and I did, but... No, so, I didn't play it, although... Uh, although I did follow a lot of it to the point where I got to the point where I was going to buy it, but um, no, I never bought it. No, okay. Although I know that it was based off of a, was it a comic book? Yep. Well, it's got that comic book feel to it as well. Like when you shoot the gun, you see the actual words, clack, 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 and whenever you hear, or whenever you hit a headshot, it actually goes pop or whatever. It's kind of got the Batman 66 feel to it with the actual words whenever you see something. Um Really cell shaded. Actually, I thought it was really awesome, and the multiplayer was actually quite fun. Um, this game pretty much takes it to another level, of course, since we are in 2014. That came out, I want to say, late 90s, whatever. Um, the game plays good. It's very fast. It is probably 120 frames a second. It is room to room to room, killing enemies. Um, the graphics, I mean, they're mainly fighting robots, so it's a lot of just little explosions. Um, they're in very early indie access, so they are on Steam. You can already go out and buy the game. Um, it is in early access, so they're constantly making updates to this on a bi-weekly basis. They are adding new content, of course. I've already played through all the way up until they no longer have anything left. Um, it is single-player only, which is my only negative thing I have to say about the game. The only good thing about being a single player that if you want any competitive nature to it is they do have leaderboards. So there is a scoring system based off of how fast you can kill enemies from room to room, rack up combos, try to get bigger kills, streaks, and everything like that. Um, But I wish it had multiplayer because it just, the level design, the weapons, it just screams multiplayer. And they said if this game sells well, they will work on Rack 2 and they will make that multiplayer. Um, it is cool. It's fourteen ninety nine. A little bit pricey, if you ask me. I would pay at the most ten right now for it. I would wait till a lot more content comes out for it before pulling the gun or the trigger. Pulling the gun. Pull the gun. Pull the gun. Pull. Pull the trigger. Um, yeah, but part of but that fifteen is going to continue to develop. This it. is where I have an issue with early access stuff. Oh, it kind of access. frightens me. So when you buy early access games, how can you know for certain that you're going to get that much money out of it? Hang on. 
You want to talk about early access concerns. Let's talk about Kickstarter concerns real quick for the people that put in for that Yogg's cast fucking oh, Kickstarter. Oh, I heard about that What one. was that? Yeah. No, talk so about they raised this about, God, they raised a couple of, what, million dollars or something along those lines, and then all of a sudden they're just like, you know what, we're not doing it. What is it? it, it, no, meant what, it what was this? So, okay, so Yogg's cast are basically a bunch of guys from uh, Britain that they do a bunch of Let's Plays where they play uh, Minecraft and uh, some other things along those lines, but primarily Minecraft, or at least the two guys that I used to watch, because I'm going to go ahead and state, because of this shenan fuck gannery, I went ahead and unsubscribed to them. Granted, I'm one person, but I'm just one person. Okay, one person's the beginning. Yeah, exactly. But it's one of these things where, so they put up a Kickstarter where they were going to do their own game. Um, I didn't really look into what the game was supposed to be. From what I saw from video of it, it was going to be a Minecraft-esque type of thing or something along those lines, but it doesn't matter. It went up on Kickstarter, and they had their entire fan base pitching some type of money. Uh, so they raised quite a, a pretty chunk of change. And um, Wasn't it close uh, to a million no, I think it was over a million. I think it was multiple millions, maybe. Possibly four. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, I didn't look into it. I didn't I didn't fact check it before sitting down to do this. It's just it's one of these things that I want to make sure everybody is aware of. Um, where they had they, they completed the Kickstarter, they funded it, but then these people were trying to do it and they couldn't do it, so they just went set and went ahead and said, We're not gonna do it. What happens? To all that money, the Kickstarter well, was, it was successful. Well, it was more than just it was more than just hey, we don't want to do it. It was hey, we've got big problems that have happened in the evolution of this, and we can't do it because we don't have any money. See, that's the fucking thing is they raised a shit ton of money during well, their Kickstarter. Well, look at other Kickstarters like um, fuck. What did Tim Schafer do that he had to do another Kickstarter for that game after he had already funded it? Oh, you're talking about the adventure game that ended up being... Um, damn, why can't I remember the name of it? Uh, well, whatever. It was that adventure game, but he had to do another Kickstarter because they ran out of money. I get that. But see, but, that's that's the thing. It's like when you do a Kickstarter where you, you, you put your views, like, reasonable, and then you exceed the views, and then you're like, okay, well, there's a fan base that really wants this, so let's go ahead and shoot a little higher than what we ex expected. And... We, Maybe some of the voice actors or some of the talent or something along those lines will be willing to do things for a slightly lower cut. But then everybody that was getting into the project knew about how well it did on Kickstarter. So then they were expecting their usual funds or things along those lines to the point where they had to go back and ask for more money. Or they were like, okay, we've got this grand ambitious idea. And then they finally get to a certain point and they're like, okay, money's all gone. And we've only gotten this far. Now, yeah. see, I can understand what they did with uh, with the game Broken Age, and uh, where they put out part one, and then part two, because then you can use part one to fund part oh, two. Uh, exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, but that I think was the thing. a whole bunch of legal crap that got involved with this one, though, oh. because there were I, apparently one of the developers that was supposed to be doing the, the core of this thing was they paid him all up front. I mean, everybody got paid up front basically with just one lump sum check. Said, here, here's your money. Well, that dude just up and left. He said, hey, I got a better gig, and he left. He took his 32000 and just vanished. Wow. Okay, and you're so, talking about the Yogg's cast thing, right? Or are you talking about the Broken Age? No, that's that should be the Yogg's cast thing. Okay. See, and that's the fucking thing is it's one of these things where – now, here's the other thing that pisses me off is that they did the Kickstarter, and they had this – pseudo developer that they had working in in the system with them and so as soon as shit went belly up yogs cast the group the guys that do their thing on youtube and their podcast and whatever they tried to distance themselves from it well guess what you put your fucking name on it mm -hmm. you can't distance yourself from it if it, we were to go out at some point and do a super barley bros video game like we did it like we put it up to the fans and said this is what we're doing we're going to do a game please contribute money and shit went belly up we're accountable period we cannot walk away from it because we reached out to our audience and said please contribute money to this 
These guys are trying to turn around and put their hands up like, we don't have anything to do with this. We're, no, uh, you can't come after us. When literally they probably still have some of that kick fighter fund in their fucking bank account. Yeah. So early access, yes, there is some bullshit in there. As Jim Sterling pointed out with what was it, Earth 2090 something or other, 2060 something bullshit. Look it up on YouTube. Jim Sterling did a wonderful video on that. Um, if you don't know who he is, you should know. Um, but it does have its its things. But if the people really are working on the game and they have a really good working game, it will be something that will be finished long. So early access, to a certain extent, in my eyes, is not that fearful. Kickstarter is more fearful. I'm, I'm more afraid of shit on Kickstarter than I am early access. Well, sure, because at least you're getting something out of what you're spending on early access, where a Kickstarter like you had just brought up as an example. I'll tell you the only two Kickstarters that I'm into uh, that I've actually purchased are, I mean, to me, companies that I can trust, which is Mighty Number no. 9 and Amplitude from Harmonix and then from Inafune or Kiji Inafune or whatever his developer company is for Mighty Number no. 9. Um, I pretty much have a feeling that these games will eventually come out, so I will get what I paid for from these Kickstarters. But it's a game that I don't have a problem funding from the start, even though I don't have anything to show for it. I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to like what I get. Um, what I'm trying to relate to where this whole uh, conversation got started, though, as far as early access with, um, with Jerry and I talking about this game, Rack, I'm only judging the price on a how much I've played, which is all the way up until I can play, and how much I think this game is worth. Yes, if you are a true believer in what the future of this game holds, then absolutely it's going to be worth the fourteen ninety nine or whatever that the price is right now. To me personally, I've played it. I don't see myself going back to play it. I don't even know what more they could add except for new weapons, which would be cool to see. Um, but until I see more levels and more content, it's like I'm pretty much just letting it sit and shit. You know, get old and whatever, but make you know, to me, it's worth ten bucks. Maybe I got about ten dollars to be a, of entertainment out of this game by playing what I've already played, which is all that I can play. Well, how much did did you pay for okay, it? Cool. Or did no, you... okay. Well, <laughs> I got a review copy. Well, called a review copy, but I actually got a copy of the game. Zip it. Whatever. <laughs> it's so many people that didn't it's pay. no. I'm talking. I'm talking about people that will go out and pay for this. I don't want them to have to spend this money when they could get uh, Watch Dogs for twenty three ninety nine, like I told John about earlier, and I tagged you in it, Jerry. I'd rather spend the extra $10 and get Watch Dogs. Well, okay. I'm just talking about from a consumer point. But I don't see, think then again, the here's, here's the thing. is is Someone who's on early access is trying to get money to finish their game. Sure. Uh, Watch Dogs on Sale is Watch Dogs on Sale. It's a triple A game, triple A game that's yeah. on sale. <laughs> well, I did the thing, too. I don't think you got so. things like that going we'll on. Like that. Okay, we'll do it with all four of my fingers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. I want to see more. I, I would like to see more, but I, like, if... The whole point of me getting this game was to see would I recommend somebody paying this much money for this game. And the answer right now to me personally, no, I'd say wait. Unless you see it on sale or if there's more content that comes out soon. I don't want to... Thank you wanna... for your honesty, Scott. You're welcome. That's, <laughs> that's what that's I what do the people need. with the stuff that I get. I am honest. Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna zip it. Well, that's good. I'm not. You know, no. But my whole thing is, you can't knock a price tag if you didn't pay for it. I can knock a price you tag for what I've paid in the past. I can knock a price tag for how much. You, you, can you can say. You can say I going. don't think that a fifteen dollar price tag is fair for the content that's there. But Child of Light is worth more to me, and I would say buy Child of Light before I'd, before I'd say I buy Rack. Spent Thirty dollars on Child of Light. Yeah. Had I known that it would be as good as it was, but and that wasn't you know, fifteen dollars was fifteen dollars was also one of those things where it was um, the people at Ubisoft that put that game together were trying to prove that the game would sell, and I'm hoping because I don't have any NPD numbers to show for it that that game actually sold very well. Uh, it reviewed greatly, but then again, it could fall into the whole Beyond Good and Evil trap where it reviewed really good but doesn't sell worth a shit. Well, it's like if Jerry came up to me and he goes, Scott. Um... Uh, tell me a game that's worth 15 bucks right now. I would not put Rack on my top list. I'd say buy Guacamelee. 
by Child of Light. Strider. By Rise of the fucking Triad, even though I know he owns it. I'd say there's so many other games that are worth that same price tag that are full versions of these games that are already complete. Now, that's not to say that Rack can't exceed these games that I'm naming. But, like I said, that's yet to be known or seen. So, more to come on it. That's why I have not done a actual review for this game, because I don't feel it's finished, and I'm not going to review a game that, in my opinion, is not finished, but I know no. it's still being worked on. Kit, could you possibly think about doing an early access review? Because, as I've heard oh. some game... game blah, 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 I'm sorry, I'm getting a little drunk here. As I've heard <laughs> some game journalists state, if you go to the point where you're asking for money and you are presenting a product you should be willing to be reviewed. I think if you spent money on it, or if you were giving a review copy code, you should create a review for it. And they should hold themselves to the point where they read that review and understand what's going on. Granted, we're not a big enough site or group to where we're on Metacritic. And Quite frankly, I hope we're never on Metacritic. <laughs> I don't I don't want to be a part of somebody's bonus. I don't want to do that. No, not at all. Hey, you're part of my bonus. I know I am. <laughs> That's totally Are you getting paid, John? No. What the hell? John, you weren't <laughs> supposed to talk about that. That was an agreement. I have y'all y'all owe me some money. Um, you <laughs> Yeah. For what? We, we actually haven't paid John either yet, so... Oh, well, let's see. For what? Um, for just the, the poster, tip. The uh, the well, website. Well, okay. Well, yeah. Um, we, the yeah. content I put on the website. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, the content. Gaming podcast. Wait, <laughs> what's going on with Rec? <laughs> Wait, no, no, hang on a second. If we're going to talk about people getting paid for content... Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I gotta go stuff, back and like. fix all your tags, Ian. Yeah. What's wrong with my tags? I'm adding more, and I'm you, putting oh, them. Oh, okay. The, well, that's fine. You can do whatever. And, the and then putting them in the the proper playlist. Uh, no, I thought I put them in the. That's off topic, buddy. Anyway, <laughs> so rack is interesting. I'd say at the very least, check out gameplay, and I will so try to record some, and I'll post it to YouTube and let you guys see it. So uh, I was I was out of the room when you you said the name. So it's called Rack. Rack. I have no idea what it stands for. Oh, okay, now spell it for me real quick. It's w just like a W R A C K. So so is this the sequel to Knack? <laughs> no. No. Oh. This is a completely different developer. Yeah, no, I got you. He is smartass. <laughs> no, I'm not. Because I corrected him on Shadowfall earlier. Ass. I am a smartass. Because <laughs> I corrected him on Shadowfall earlier. He got back at me. <laughs> so, what did y'all think of the exhibitors this year? So... Oh, it's alright. They were okay. It I thought it was about right half about. of what it was last year. Well, you know what really pissed me off, and this is just me personally. Tell Where me, was John. my fucking swag? Yeah, we There's got no that. swag whatsoever. Now, did you pay for the swag pack, or are you just talking about no. other swag in general? I'm talking about swag in general. There used to be a point in time that you would have exhibitors that would be there that had nothing but swag to give away. I know. Well, no, the first thing that you would go for is shirts and mm -hmm. little knickknacks. Give me some swag, man. Come on. Yeah, I mean, session, man, you, have, you have no booth, babes. You have no swag. What What are you there for? Free candy? We're in a recession. I want your free candy. We're not in a recession, Alec. <laughs> Shut up about that. If we're in a recession, it's because of your employer. No, I'm just we are, kidding. We are not in a recession <laughs> of any sort. Um, and I won't mention that employer, so let's just move on. Okay. Uh, but, no, I mean, I agree with you, John. I, I, I do remember last year I came away with a little bit more swag. Um, I mean, the most noticeable one that wasn't there was Cooler Master. Uh, yeah, it, that was a little weird. Yeah, because they're like they've that's always the one, been involved. Yeah, you, that's the one you like expect to be there. Like mm -hmm. Inwin was there, uh, but they weren't giving away a lot of swag. Um, you know, uh, I had to buy my shirts, except for that U UAC UAC one that we got for the Doom yeah, thing. Yeah, John and I didn't even get because yeah, we were yeah, fucking yeah. press. Y'all still so didn't get it. As, as no, we didn't get it last year. We actually got swag. We got the. We got the QDQ swag last year for being press. So we kind of doubled up on that, which was kind of a benefit. But you know what? If you're taking stuff home to your wife, why the hell not? But 
regardless, if if I'm there, give me some swag. Well, yeah. Did you wait? Okay, I'm sorry. I missed there this. Was not, no, you missed. For those, for those of you listening, no I stood up and walked away for a minute because I had to go take care of something. There was no fucking swag. I remember you guys got like there rage posters no, and like no, no. mouse pads and there was shit. No, no, no. no free swag this year. Now, okay. 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 Now, hang, on, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Here's my no. thought. Quick, guys. Hold on. You I need to make sure on. that <laughs> I can look weirder than you can. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's try. My it. teeth are all that. jacked up, nasty. I think I'm going to admit that I can look weirder than you can, boy. Mm-hmm. You got pretty teeth, boy. What are you going to say, John? So here's the thing. Maybe they didn't do a whole lot of swag because we're coming up on the 20th anniversary. True. Maybe that's the reason why. If that's the case, okay, I'll cut you some slack. But come on. Bring back the swag. Or should we do All a right. Twitter thing? Should we hashtag uh, QuakeCon2015 with bring back the swag? I think we should. <laughs> we should We should do that. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, so we've got, we're almost on the two-hour mark, um, and we've still got a lot Hey everyone, we just wanted to let you know that as a group this year, we are going to be participating in a charity event called Extra Life. This is a gaming community event where we'll be raising funds for the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Head on over to our site find out more. We'd love any support you could offer. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Super Barley Brothers Podcast. Find us on WordPress, Gmail, Google+, Plus, YouTube, and Podbean using Super Barley Bros. On iTunes using Super Barley Brothers. Join the conversation on Facebook.com slash groups slash Super Barley Bros. My name is Ian. I am at Dean75002 on Twitter. Hi, this is Jerry. Twitter, JD underscore Chef. John, you can reach me on Twitter, Phoenix42. Hi, I'm Scott, and you can reach me on Twitter, Flip42, FL1P42. Please go check out our friend's site, Con- <laughs> Freaksandgeeks.com to find out the latest on comics, anime, sci-fi, conventions, cosplay, and more. Stay freaky people, my friends. Like the music? Check out Eric on his YouTube channel, 331 Era. See y'all in a couple of weeks. Thanks for playing. <laughs>